It's official. Nobody can survive Doug Peterson's play calling. Nobody. Not Jalen Hurts, not Carson Wentz, not Superman himself. Nobody can survive Doug Peterson's play calling. This video is brought to you by the Run It Back Teespring store. Click the link in the description. Get all the Run It Back t-shirts, merchandise, all that good stuff. Use the code RUNMY20 for 20% off. And buymeacoffee.com slash runitback. I give you sports talk. You give me coffee. We are at 11 supporters now. I know I told you guys I was going to shotgun a beer when we hit 10. And I'm sticking to my word. So... Here it is, man. I got it all set up right here. I don't want to spill this on anything up here because we got expensive shit up here. But listen, man, I told you I would do it, so I'm going to do it. I called my girlfriend. I said, hey, I need you to pick me up uh, some cans of beer on your way home. I got a shotgun of beer on YouTube. She bought me pounders, okay? She bought me 16-ounce cans. I'm like, why the hell would you do that? I told you I have to shotgun it. And you know what she said? She said, because I thought it would be funny. All right, so here you go. I'm going to shotgun a Coors Light, a 16-ounce pounder right now on YouTube just for you guys getting me to 11 supporters on buymeacoffee.com. And if you get me to 20, who the hell knows what I'm going to do. But let's just do this real quick. Shit, that went down a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Woo! All right. I would not recommend shotgunning a 16-ounce beer. All right, let's get into this game, man. Um... You know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Uh, If you're listening on Apple Music or Spotify, uh, give me a five-star rating and a review. Let's get into it, man. Jalen Hurts was phenomenal. Jalen Hurts was phenomenal. I mean, again, like, like you don't have to pick a side, right? I keep saying there's three main, there was three main issues with this team. There's, there's still two of them. Doug Peterson, the offensive line, well, lack of talent. You know, bad drafting, all that kind of stuff. And Carson Wentz was terrible. He has no pocket awareness. He can't make the right decisions. His throws were inaccurate, all that stuff, man. And I was the biggest Carson Wentz supporter forever, and I started to see it. You know, maybe all of those things is what drove him to that, but that's just a fact. So you put Jalen Hurts in here, and look what we got. Because he backs up, and he gets the hell out of the pocket. That's all there is to it. He does what Carson Wentz used to do, what Carson Wentz did in 2017 That's what Jalen Hurts does right now. And you know what? It's not just him getting outside the pocket. He throws accurate throws. He converted so many third downs in this game. A couple of fourth downs in this game. I mean, he puts the ball on the money. And at the end of the day, as bad as I feel for Carson Wentz, for everything this organization has done to him, refusing to give him a number one target, drafting another quarterback, all the stuff this organization has done to him, not having his back. You got to go with the guy that's playing better. And it's Jalen Hurts at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we are Eagles fans. We root for the Eagles. You know what I'm saying? So now we're in a hell of a situation, but let's break down the game here before I talk about what we're going to do moving forward. Um, At the end of the day, man, Jalen Hurts was poised. He was patient. Uh, he just, he looks so collected and calm. He, he does not look like a rookie at all. I can't believe the way that he's playing. I don't really even have words for it. I am absolutely flabbergasted as I'm watching this game. I'm screaming. My girlfriend's in the kitchen. She's like, what the hell's wrong? I'm like, Jalen Hurts did this. Jalen Hurts did this. Jalen Hurts just fumbled the ball, picked it up somehow, and still threw for a first down. You know what I mean? Jalen Hurts just threw a touchdown on third and whatever. Jalen Hurts just converted another fourth down pass when we thought the game was over. He was ridiculous. But one thing held the Eagles back once again, and it was Doug Peterson's play calling, and it was most notably Doug Peterson's second half play calling. Because... He didn't even abandon the run the whole game. 
For some reason, it's just the second half. Miles Sanders had 12 carries in the first half. Even being down 19-0, to Doug Peterson called a balanced game in the first half. Creative runs, creative pass plays, a double end-around screen to Miles Sanders that got him like 40 yards. Where have those plays been the whole season? Uh, once again, it's just the same thing every game. The first half, I'm saying, who is this coach calling these plays? The second half, I'm like, there it is. There's Doug Peterson. Miles Sanders had 12 carries in the first half. He had five in the second. Why would that be? Why would that be? Especially in a tie game. The game was 26 to 26 at one point. The Philadelphia Eagles were inside the Cardinals 30 yard line with three timeouts and three minutes left in the game. And Doug Peterson didn't give the ball to Miles Sanders once. Why? I'm done trying to figure out why. I'm done with this guy as a play caller. He is absolutely horrendous. When the game gets gets emotional, when the game gets close, when things get tense, Doug Peterson literally forgets how to play how to call plays. He just totally his brain turns off. He just gets so hyped up and thinks you have to pass the ball every play. Pass, 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 pass. To finish to, to the for, way the first half looked, to finish this game with 44 pass attempts and car, and M- Miles Sanders only having 16 carries is just once again unacceptable. And Jalen Hurts can play as good as he wants to play. No quarterback in the world can survive this offensive line combined with Doug Peterson's bad play calling. He can't. He can't. Carson Wentz can't. Nobody can. But. Jalen Hurts does give you a level of excitement that Carson Wentz doesn't because he can get out of the pocket. I think he needs to audible a lot more of these plays. I think he needs to get himself out of the pocket. When it came down to, okay, so inside the 30, under three minutes left, like I just said, and, you know, he forces Hurts to throw from the pocket three times in a row. He hits, he hit Goddard in the end zone in the hands. He, he dropped it. He threw it back to him. It got batted down. Um, and... Do we go for it on fourth down and not get it? I don't fucking remember. But anyway, uh, we get the ball back. The defense comes up huge, and the defense came up big this whole game. I was impressed with the defense. I was impressed with the, dare I say, linebacker play. Jalen Mills got beat a couple times really badly, but I never thought Jalen Mills was any good. Nobody actually besides Jalen Mills thinks Jalen Mills is any good. Remember when he tweeted and told us to vote for him for the Pro Bowl? (laughs) Yeah, okay, Jalen Mills. But the defense got us a huge stop. Now there's a minute and 30 seconds left. No timeouts. What what should be the offense? With a quarterback, a mobile quarterback, who's good at throwing on the run, and you have no timeouts, what should be the offense? Have you ever seen Aaron Rodgers run one of these? You've seen Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, all these guys. You've seen them do these drills, these minute and 30 second drills, right? With no timeouts. You've seen them throw the ball three or four times, get down in field goal range and win a game. Or if you need a touchdown to tie, you've seen them drive down the field and get that touchdown. How does it happen? Rollouts and sideline throws. Rollouts and sideline throws. Watch every single time Aaron Rodgers has done the one minute drill with no timeouts. Rollouts. And sideline throws. I'm going to say it one more time. Rollouts and sideline throws. First down, Jalen Hurts drops straight back in the pocket and throws it over the middle of the field, which was dropped. If it was caught, it would have cost you about 30 seconds and you really didn't get anywhere. Second down. Straight drop in the pocket. Third down, straight drop in the pocket. Fourth down, straight drop in the pocket. Luckily for Doug, Jalen Hurts hit Greg Ward Jr. on the fourth and ten to keep it alive. Then here we go again. First down, straight drop in the pocket. You get the point. This coach has no fucking idea how to call plays. I'm so sick of watching it. I tweeted in the first half, Doug Peterson's play calling will lose this game. Once again, it does. How many? I I just can't sit up here and say the same thing over and over and over again. (sighs) I call him Doug Screenerson. 
All right, Doug Screenerson. He's obsessed with the screen pass for some reason. He doesn't run it at all, by the way, when Carson Wentz is behind center. Then Jalen Hurts is behind center, and Doug's like, oh, now we have a mobile quarterback, because I, I I guess he forgets Carson Wentz was one of those. And he's like, we got to run a bunch of screen play, screen play, screen play, screen play. Read option, read option, read option, screen play, screen play, screen play. The only successful plays in this game were throws down the field when Jalen Hurts got outside the pocket. I shouldn't say the only successful plays. There was a couple, and there was one big one, the Quez Watkins screenplay, but you all know what happened. It was third and 20. Doug was packing it in. Doug was taking the field goal. What, where were we at? We were in the 40. I don't know what. He was taking something. It was third and 20. He was packing it in. He said, screw it, I'm going to call another screen. It was a horrible call. It was ran terribly. It got all jumbled up in the middle, and Quez did a ridiculous spin move and bounced it to the outside down the sideline. So Quez Watkins outperformed Doug Peterson's bad play call. And it was an amazing touchdown, and I give Watkins all the credit for that. And maybe Watkins, maybe Quez Watkins is the speedy receiver that we've been needing forever. <sighs> But Doug Screenerson, man, every single time Jalen Hurts got momentum, throwing the ball down the field here, hitting a receiver on a route, getting outside the pocket, hitting a receiver crossing the field, Doug said, let's do another screen pass to Jalen Rager. Ten, ends up 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. I, I, I just can't get with this with this guy with this play calling, man. Um, let's talk about Jalen Rager. Speaking of uh, speed that we need at wide receiver, uh, people are saying Jalen Rager is just not as fast as we thought he was. And he beat Patrick Peterson, I believe. I don't remember who the defender was in the end zone. Jalen Hurts threw a, threw a ball to Jalen Rager in the end zone. He was behind the defense. It was a touchdown ball. Hurts just threw it a little bit too late. If he threw it a, a one second sooner and led him, it's a touchdown in the back of the end zone. It was a little bit too late. Uh, Rager kind of had to come back to it and jump in the air, and the defender got his hand up there. I'm not putting that on Rager at all. There was another play that looked like a trick play. I don't know what the hell it was. Every All, all the offensive linemen and Hurts were looking at the sideline, and they snapped the ball. I don't know if they tried that, and it was a trick play, or if it was by accident, and I don't know. Rager burned down the sideline again, and Jalen Hurts just playing out, flat out overthrew him. And then there was a couple where he beat Patrick Peterson one-on-one, -on -one and Peterson got called for pass interference. And, you know, I'm not seeing the lightning speed from Jalen Rager that, that everyone talked about. I'm not seeing a 4-2-40. I'm definitely not seeing that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think it was a bad draft pick. I just don't think there's any offensive creativity. Like I said, if you put Justin Jefferson on this team and put Jalen Rager on that team, you're going to see Jalen Rager... You can't because it's hypothetical and it's not a real situation, but you would see Jalen Rager have those numbers and you would see Justin Jefferson struggling here because there's no creativity on the offense. The route combinations are basic. Everybody runs a go route. It's so predictable. It, do it doesn't benefit anybody. There's not like... Think about it. Every single year we say none of our receivers can get space. None of our receivers can create space. And then Nelson Aguilar leaves and has six touchdowns in eight games in, in, in damn Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? We always said our receivers can't get space. At what point? How many years do we say that until we accept the fact that there's no? it's the offense? It's the offensive creativity. Travis Fulgham had four targets in this game. Four! Was Travis Fulgham a flash in the pan? Let me know in the comments. Let me know on Twitter. If you're, if you're listening to this in the podcast form, let me know on Twitter at IMDJ Eastwood or just tweet me whatever the hell you want. Is Travis Fulgham a flash in the pan? Or did this offense forget about him? He had four targets in this game. Two of them... We're with the game on the line when Jalen Hurts was calling the plays. With the in the hurry up offense, no more Doug Peterson. Jalen Hurts is calling the plays. Who does he go to? Travis Fulgham. He even threw to him in like triple coverage at one point, and uh, Alshon Jeffrey was pissed off on the other side of the field because he's like, "Yo, I had my man one on one." But that just tells me that Jalen Hurts came back in the huddle to call a play, and he said, "I'm going to Travis Fulgham because that dude gets it done." 
Why doesn't Doug Peterson run a single play? Why wouldn't you be in practice like, hey, I'm going to take Travis Fulgham. I'm going to put him right here. I'm going to have this route combination, bam, 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 bam. I'm going to have him go this way and then this way, and that's going to get him open because he's a great receiver and we need to get him open. It doesn't seem like Doug Peterson runs plays for any specific player. He just calls them at random. I've been saying it all season. We absolutely cannot watch this next year. We cannot. You can't make us watch another season of Doug Peterson calling plays. But anyway, I don't think Jalen Rager is a, is a bust. Uh, I just don't think there's any creativity on the offensive side of the ball, and it shows, man. If it's not Jalen Rager, it's the guy we drafted last year. It's the guy we drafted the year before that. Watch freaking Orsega Whiteside go to another team and all of a sudden play like he was supposed to play. At some point, you start to look at the organization and not the player and say, what the hell is wrong with the organization from the inside, from the coaching standpoint? From the creativity, from the guy that's drawing the plays on the whiteboard, something's wrong here, right? Because Jalen Hurts comes in here, provides a spark, gives you what Carson Wentz can't give you, pocket awareness, gets the hell out, makes something out of nothing. But the ball don't lie. At the end of the day, the ugly face will show itself. It will. You can only put lipstick on a pig for so long. It will show itself. And at the end of the day, Doug Peterson's play calling cannot be masked long enough. It will always come out in the wash. You understand what I'm saying? Jalen Hurts can do anything he wants to do. He cannot outplay Doug Peterson's bad play calling. And it's it's more exciting than Carson Wentz. I'll give him that. It's more fun to watch. He gives you a better chance to win the game with this offensive line and play calling, but at the end of the day, this offensive line and this play calling is bad, and it's always going to be bad. It doesn't matter if you put Joe Montana in his prime back there. Nothing's going to happen until something in the coaching staff changes. An offensive coordinator? I don't know. Shout out to Greg Ward Jr. with the two touchdown catches, man. We don't talk about Greg Ward Jr. enough. Absolutely clutch. Keeps his mouth shut. Doesn't say a damn thing. Never gets recognized. Isn't regarded as like some superstar wide receiver. But he just gets shit done. He's always right there. Jalen Hurts hit him for two touchdowns. He caught that thing. I mean, the the, the replay... Uh, they called him out of, out of bounds. I didn't think they were going to overturn it because I didn't think there was enough, uh, whatever they call it, you know what I mean, undeniable evidence or something like that. Like we're in a goddamn courtroom when it comes to an NFL replay. But his toe was right at the line. I'm saying, eh, is he in bounds? Is he out of bounds? I don't know. They gave it to us. Shout out to Greg Ward Jr. Sure hands, reliable, always just there. Doesn't have to be the superstar guy. Doesn't get mad when he doesn't get the ball thrown to him. He just gets it done, man. Came off the practice squad, what, two years ago now, man. Shout out to Greg Ward Jr. Does Alshon Jeffrey hate Carson Wentz? Or was Alshon Jeffrey actually hurt the whole season and now he's finally healthy making plays? Or does Alshon Jeffrey just play... For quarterbacks not named Carson Wentz. I I haven't seen Alshon Jeffrey play like this for two seasons. I don't think any of us have. He came back a couple weeks ago, had like eight snaps, whatever. Uh, I guess they eased him back into it, and now he's at 100%. And he looks like the old Alshon. I mean, for Alshon Jeffrey to be getting off the line and beating Patrick Peterson off the line one-on-one, and Jalen Hurts to be dropping a dime over the top along the sideline, and then they ran it a couple more times, and Peterson got called for two pass interference penalties because he couldn't hold him. That that gives me hope for Alshon Jeffrey, right? That gives me hope. I don't think he should be getting snaps over Travis Fulgham, but at the end of the day, if Alshon is Alshon again, I'm happy about it. At the end of the day, I'm an Eagles fan. I'm rooting for the Eagles. I want them to do good. I want whoever's on the field to do good. But I'm just saying, where the hell has Alshon Jeffrey been when Carson Wentz is behind center? Eagles defense stepped up, man. Uh, You know, for the most part, I really enjoyed um, 
a couple of players that, that came out of nowhere, dude, because we had the injuries. Um, Jalen Mills stinks. Um, you know, Avante Maddox is out, whoever the hell else is out. Uh, the defensive line got a lot of pressure in the second half. We got a lot of stops that we needed. We got a lot of pressure on Kyler Murray, made him make mistakes, made him make bad throws. It just The defense came up huge. We knew that was going to have to happen. The forced fumbles we got, the sack we got, all that stuff that contributed to us having a chance in this game. And at the end of the day, with as bad as our offensive creativity is and, and, and offensive line, uh, and play calling. We're going to need the defense to put us in games like this. And the defense stepped up and kept us in this game and gave the offense a chance. Doug Peterson just brought it back down. That's all. Um, Michael Jaquet, is that how you say it? Or Jaque? Let me know if I'm saying it wrong. I don't even know how to say the guy's damn name. He was huge. A forced fumble, and then he had a sack and somebody else forced a fumble, so I'm going to count that as a half-forced fumble. You know what I'm saying? He made a couple of huge tackles. Marcus Epps out there gets an interception in the end zone, and then a huge third-down stop with the big tight end over the middle, and Marcus Epps comes down like old-school Brian Dawkins just laying down the freaking hammer. You know what I'm saying? I was so hyped for that play. I haven't seen an eagle safety fly into somebody in years. Years! You understand what I'm saying? I haven't seen that level of intensity and effort from this defense in years. That's so refreshing to me. I still personally think Jim Schwartz got to go. I'm ready to see a different system. I'm ready to see a different philosophy. I'm I'm tired of the conservative zone defenses. I'm I'm just I'm ready to see something different. As far as Doug Peterson, I don't know if you got to fire Doug Peterson, you know what I'm saying, but I'm ready to see a different play caller. I think everybody in the whole damn city and the outskirts and the state and anybody else that's a Philadelphia Eagles fan across the damn country or world is ready to see a different person calling plays than Doug Peterson. And we are ready to see somebody drafting players that is not named Howie Roseman. We got to ask ourselves questions, okay? Because the report came out today that Carson Wentz wants out if he's not, if he's going to be the backup quarterback. And like, it was not a shock. What the hell did this organization think was going to happen? What did you think? You were going to have a $100 million quarterback and he, he ends up playing like garbage, partly because the offensive line got him hit 48 times this season, got him sacked 48 times. I'm sorry, he got hit about 2,000, okay? Uh, he's mentally damaged, right? He is. Carson Wentz is mentally damaged, and at the end of the day, no, he doesn't want to play backup quarterback, but it's not just that. Carson Wentz doesn't want to play in Philadelphia anymore, and why would he? He needs a change of scenery. He just does, okay? If Jalen Hurts is our guy, we're, and, and from the looks of it this game, against a good defense, I have no reason to say Jalen Hurts is not the future of the Philadelphia Eagles. I have no reason to say that. I really don't. Some people are still going to say that. I, I'm just saying there's nothing sticking out to me in front of my face that's telling me Jalen Hurts is not the future of this team. And if that's our guy and that's the future, then what do we do? Carson Wentz does not want to be a backup. Of course he doesn't want to be a backup. He knows how good he can possibly be, right? And he just needs a change of scenery. Everything this organization's done to him, he needs an organization. First of all, here's what Carson Wentz needs. Carson Wentz, I was telling Anthony this, my my best friend Anthony, I was telling Anthony this today. Carson Wentz needs an organization that's going to be behind him 100%. Because from his rookie season... He was calling his own plays. He was running his own show, right? And it was all gravy. And then it just started to come out Carson Wentz's. You know, and I think as a rookie, nobody likes that. And, and it was Carson Wentz's arrogant. He doesn't listen to coaches. He this, 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 and this. And then it all started going downhill. And then he gets hurt. Uh, Nick Foles wins the Super Bowl. Now nobody believes in Carson. Then he comes back and he's going to try to listen to the coaching staff more and and run the plays that are called and it's not even close to as good as it was when he was calling his own plays or when Frank Reich was setting him up with options to call plays at the line, right? And then they go and draft Jalen Hurts in the second round instead of giving him a star receiver. It's just one thing after another. Why would Carson Wentz want to stick around? He, he, 
somebody on Twitter told me, "Yeah, hey, go ahead, run away from drama and give up." Bro, there, it, there's a everybody has a limit. You understand what I'm saying? Carson doesn't have to prove himself to anybody, and he shouldn't have to come back here in an Eagles uniform and prove to anybody that he can play quarterback. He shouldn't have to do that. He should want out of Philadelphia as much as anybody thinks he should want out of Philadelphia. It's not rocket science. He's not a backup. If we're going with the younger guy that looks better right now, then Carson Wentz wants out, and you got to get rid of him. And where does he go? Who's going to trade for him? Well, plenty of teams will trade for him. Let's be serious because they saw what he could possibly do in the right situation. But Frank Reich should put everything on the table for Carson Wentz. And I'm calling it right now. You can save this video podcast episode. You can write it down. You can you can just book it. All right. If Carson Wentz gets traded to the Indianapolis Colts with Frank Reich, who, by the way, is what right now? 30 points a game his offense is with old man Phillip Rivers. They just won again today. What are they, 9-3? and 8-5, and 8-4, and four? I don't fuck know. I'm just saying. If Carson Wentz goes to Indianapolis with Frank Reich, that will be the new dynasty. That will be the new Belichick and Brady. Carson Wentz and Frank Reich. And go ahead and tell me in the comments that I'm crazy. I don't care what you say. Just wait for it to happen. At the end of the day, I'm rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm rooting for Jalen Hurts as the starting quarterback. I'm rooting for my team to win. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm not rooting for the Eagles because of this organization. I'm going to go root for Carson Wentz for the Colts. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm always going to have, I hope, Carson Wentz the best, whatever, whatever. I'm rooting for the Eagles at the end of the day. That's my team. That's my city. That's that's where that's my heart. That's where my family is from. You know the whole story, okay? I'm just saying, if Carson Wentz goes to the Colts, it's going to be a dynasty because the match mastermind of the Super Bowl was Frank Reich, the mastermind of the Colts right now with a 39,000-year-old quarterback, Phillip Rivers, is Frank Reich. And if he gets Carson Wentz at 27 years old, expect a couple more Super Bowls for Frank Reich and, and Carson Wentz moving forward. That's all I got to say, man. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back. Thanks for listening to me rant. This team is just unbelievable. It just... It's just so up and down. It's such a roller coaster. Like, can they just be good or bad? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're bad now, so I expect us to lose. But then we make a quarterback change, and now Jalen Hurts makes us look like we're possibly good again. And we always have, we can't just get blown out. We always have a chance. You always have to keep me on the edge of my seat till the damn end of the fourth quarter. I'm sick of it, man. My stress levels can't take it. Uh, you guys are awesome, man. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. Give me a review.